The benchmark HPA4 is a high quality preamp and headphone amp that, although being digitally controlled, only does analog audio. I admit the HPA4 doesn't fit the self-imposed profile of my channel since it's an analog preamp, but the rules are there to be broken and I had good excuses. Some very loyal viewers and supporters of the channel requested a review while another supporter asked me if there could be a sound improvement if he added a preamp between his MyTech Brooklyn Bridge and his Arcam PowerAmp. So I decided to make an exception and review the HPA4 while at the same time see if a preamp improves the sound quality. I will not review it as a headphone amp since, as you know, I don't enjoy headphone listening. Traditionally a preamp provides source selection, volume control and tone control. It can also solve interface problems by working as a driver supplying optimal output impedance and sufficient voltage. The preamp can be a standalone device to be used with a power amp but can also be integrated with a power amp in what most of us would call an amplifier. Let's see how the HPA4 will be used in practice. As said, it is to be connected to a power amp that in turn drives a pair of speakers. You can then connect the analog outputs of for instance a CD player to the HPA4. If you connect a streamer, it will be connected to your router and over the router to both the internet and your computer for music files. Again, the streamer is connected to the HPA4 using analog outputs of the streamer. If the streamer has no analog outputs, the well-known white and red RCA connectors, you need a digital to analog converter, a DAC, to be inserted in between the streamer and the HPA4. By the way, input selection volume, mute, dim and power can also be operated from the optional infrared remote. The MyTech Brooklyn Bridge is a network bridge and a DAC and can be connected to the HPA4 using the analog outputs of the Brooklyn Bridge. Since both the DAC and the preamp have three pole XLR connectors, an XLR female to XLR male cable is used. In other cases the well known RCA cable is used. And of course if you listen over headphones or in ears the power amp and speakers are not needed. I know it's a matter of taste, but I like the somewhat industrial design of the benchmark. The front can be either black or silver anodized aluminium, the top, sides and back are always black. It's 220 mm wide, 237 mm deep and 99 mm tall, including the feed. The sturdy cabinet weighs 3.6 kilos. On the front we see the standby button, the 6.3 mm headphone jack, the 4 pole XLR for balanced headphones and the rotary encoder that does the line output volume the headphone volume or both. Pressing the knob steps you through these options. On the full color touchscreen write the gain to the line output, the gain to the headphones output, the active input, the virtual buttons to select the inputs, a virtual button for 20 dB attenuation, mute headphones and mute line outputs, set balance, the settings menu and a button to switch off the display. Time to look at the rear. Left we see balance line input 1 and 2 on XLR, then single ended input 3 and 4 on RCA, single ended line output on RCA, balanced output on XLR, a mono balanced output on XLR to be used for connecting a subwoofer, the IEC mains input and two 12 volt trigger outputs to switch on other equipment like a power amplifier. As can be seen it is rather crowded here, especially unplugging cables connected to line input 4, balanced output right and balanced output mono when all inputs are populated does need slender fingers. Luckily you don't need to unplug them frequently. Directly behind the IC mains input we find a mains filter with in front of it a switch mode power supply and a Faraday cage. Remarkable is the hard wiring of the RCA plugs. They are not mounted directly to the circuit board but connected over short wires. 
not a problem but not the easiest product method, especially since the HPA4 is produced in the States. Then we see an audio circuit board. The ICs have the type number removed. A second identical board is mounted directly below the first one. I presume these boards contain the gold plated relays for input switching and the 256 step volume controls. Two channels for the line output and two channels for the headphone output. These are processor controlled. The processor is on the lower board below the two audio boards. In front of this board we find the THX achromatic class H audio amplifier that is used for headphones. Achromatic is a term coming from the glass lens technology and means that all colors follow the same path in contrast to a prism that breaks up the spectrum in all colors of the rainbow. In audio it must mean that all frequencies travel through the amp in the same time. Class H is the US variant of class G that is used by European companies. Both use two or more DC rails that carry different voltages. By switching between them, depending on the signal strength, provides a more efficient amp that dissipates less energy. The combination of the rotary encoder, the touchscreen and the optional remote control makes operating the HPA4 easy and intuitive. Only the input choices might be confusing at first. The four analog inputs are chosen by the left and right arrows on the touchscreen and on the remote. The D1 to D4 analog and USB on the remote are for choosing inputs on the benchmark DAC. The HPA4 is designed to work with benchmark DACs, so if you choose for instance the USB input, the infrared remote switches the DAC input to USB, not an input on the HPA4. On the HPA4, you can name each input according to the source connected, for instance DAC for the DAC and TV for the TV. I can imagine that the separate volume settings and the indication for line output and headphones is ideal for those that frequently switch from speakers to headphones and back. You could, by the way, couple both, but I can't see why. I couldn't hear a difference between using the preamp of my Audio Note Sorrow SE and the HPA4. In both cases I used the power amp of the Audio Note. As I have explained before, my Sorrow SE is heavily modified. Other tubes, other capacitors, better potentiometers and a separate power amp input that is selected when a 12 volt trigger is fed to the also added trigger input. The HPA4 was fed the balanced output of the Brooklyn Bridge while it sends its output single ended to the audio node. The SE at the end of the model name stands for single ended. The single ended outputs of the Brooklyn Bridge were connected to the CD inputs of the audio node preamp. Interlinks by Grim Audio. Although there were variables like balanced versus single ended cabling, I could not hear a difference in sound quality. There is no direct conclusion to be made here about the absolute sound quality of the HPA4 as a preamp, other than it is at least as good as the Audio Note preamp. In the past I have compared my tweaked Audio Note against amplifiers north of 10K only to conclude it performed equal or better with the exception of how deep lows were controlled. And even there the difference was limited. So I think it's justifiable to rate the HPA4 as extremely good in its price range, having refined silky smooth highs, very natural voices, lots of texture in the lows, a royal but precise stereo image and a blacker than black background. By the way, it is the living proof that a switch mode power supply can be used in high quality equipment when properly designed. I have not reviewed preamps for some time now, but I can't imagine another preamp would further improve the sound of my setup one. But hey, I have been wrong before. It is of course a small sidestep and I therefore will not report in detail on how useful a preamp is in between a DAC and a power amp. It is now clear to me that there is no single answer to this question. It appears to depend on the dimensioning of the output circuit of the DAC. With the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge, 
the Brooklyn First Generation and the Yulong D810, it gave no improvement. But when using the Chord Mojo, the LO Boss DAC, the Audiophonics Rasp DAC LTE iSaver ES9038Q2M, the Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus Pro, the Sonos Connect, the AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt and the Meridian Explorer 2, it did make a difference. Let me stress that these DACs are fine DACs for the money and not of the quality for my setup one. The MyTex and Yulong have rather powerful line outputs, including balanced outputs. It will be interesting to see what happens with a streamer in the 1000 to 2000 euro class that have simpler single ended outputs. Although I have not tested it, the dimensioning of the power amplifier input might be of consequence too. So as often with audio, I can't give a conclusive answer. Although I can't give that answer, I'm still glad I reviewed the HPA4. Benchmark caught my attention already years ago when I reviewed and bought their initial DAC1. As you know, I always measure equipment to find it has technical flaws. The relation between measurements and sound quality is uncertain to say the least. But in this case, both measurements and sound quality are of top quality. I know of little amps that measure as clean as the HPA4 and offer equal clean, open, fast, high resolution sound quality. From a friend I heard that that goes for the headphone listening too. At around 3500 euros including VAT, around 3000 dollars in the States ex sales tax, it's not a low budget, but it's worth every cent. And that brings us to the end of this video. There will be a new video as always at Friday 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.